I want to I want to talk about you, and I want to talk yeah. about like. So where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, Orange County, California. Uh, uh, Beaver Cleaver house. Dad worked. Mom at home. Have a sister. Uh, had a dog. Like that's, you know, lived in a nice suburb of Fullerton, California. Uh, just in case anyone's wondering, I'm the only dwarf in the family. There are no. I we we don't all come from the same tribe. You know, <laughs> you're not just like. Which house is the dwarf house? Ah, yes, the mushroom with the door in it. Like, <laughs> like that's not, that's not my deal. Uh, uh, but yeah, came, came in that household. Became a Broncos fan because my dad went to Stanford and uh, John Elway went. To yep, Stanford. yep. He, he wanted us to support a uh, Stanford-led team, and the joke is that gave me two options: uh, Elway with the Broncos or Plunkett with the Raiders. And because I don't have face tattoos or priors, uh, <laughs> it became it became Elway with the Broncos. So that's where the Bronco fandom comes into play. And, uh, yeah, grew up, but then Orange County kid, normal childhood, and then age 19, that's when, that's when the moment that changed my life happens, where I'm in the audience uh, of a comedy show. you were show. going to USC, right? You yeah, were- I, yeah, I went to USC. What were uh, you studying? Communications. So when I dropped out to do comedy, we did not lose a cancer cure. Right. We're fine. <laughs> We're not like, oh, what could have been if Brad right. just got his degree? I was trying to be, I was trying to be a broadcast journalist. I was trying to be a sports broadcaster. Okay. I grew up with Vince Scully and mm-hmm. um, Chick Hearn in, uh, in LA. So that's what I wanted to do. I was that nerd kid that turned off the game uh, or turned off the volume and then would announce the game myself. Knew all the players, knew all the stats. Uh, still might be able to check off a bucket list item. I've been talking with the Broncos announcers. They, uh, uh, Dave, uh, Dave Logan. Yeah, D- yeah, Dave Logan wants to get me on for uh, like one play, just call like a, a play, and that would be the absolute dream. Um, or here's an yeah. idea: What's what that? if we live stream a game wherever you're at, and we could just zoom in and game. we can do that. We'll do our own version of the Manning cast. Exactly. Wolf Dwarf. Dwarf Wolf. Whatever it is. <laughs> Mini Wolf. I don't care. <laughs> Mini Wolf. <laughs> Let's make it happen. I think that would be fun. <laughs> I'll have to tell Rick Lewis, sorry, man. I'm doing it with the wolf. Yep, sorry, bud. <laughs> but yeah, that's like that was the dream, and that's what I was going to school for. And then uh Father's Day of uh two thousand and uh three. Uh, I go t- take my dad to the Brea Improv, and we see a comedy show. The comedian on stage, is Carlos Ma- Mencia. Yeah, Mencia's on stage making midget jokes. Half the audience is laughing. The audience that's sitting by me is like, "Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> stop! Get off the midget jokes! Like, stop, stop!" And Mencia notices, and he's like, "What? Is one of them here?" <laughs> and I was just like, "Yes, yes, sir, I am here." And uh, he didn't make fun of me. He called me up on stage, and he started asking me questions. He's just like, I want to talk to you. Start, st- starts asking me questions. I'm answering the questions honestly, not trying to be funny, uh, but my answers got laughs. And what were some of the – do you remember any yeah, of those questions? Oh, I remember these because you're my first laughs on stage. First thing he goes, like, what do you do for a living? And I was 19 years old, and at the time, Orange County kid, I did what all Orange County kids did. I worked at Disneyland. That's what I was doing, and I said that. The audience laughed, and I turned to them and said, shut the fuck up. I'm not one of the seven. And <laughs> that got a laugh. And uh, That's funny. Yeah. So then that was like, oh, that felt good. That felt really good. So then uh, literally that night, went home. Uh, there used to be a website uh, that was called chucklemonkey.com. Every open mic comic from like 2000 to 2008 or whatever the website shut down knows about this website it listed every open mic all over the country you just click on your state here's your open mics here's the days so i remember finding the website going to it and then 20 years later <laughs> so, i mean that that that's the fast version of the story yeah what, so what so all right so mencia brings you up on stage yeah. you do it and you yeah. get that endorphin drop of like yeah. making people laugh yeah and getting a reaction mm-hmm. from the crowd right mm-hmm. and you're like oh fuck i kind of want to do this yeah and so what so was, yeah. so did um because i think i read that you um that he brought you on tour with him yeah for four years so uh a year or so later i saw him again this time i was at the ontario improv and i had told him because uh, he did a meet and greet after the first show, and I told him, "Hey, I started doing 
stand up because of what our interaction was. He goes, oh, really? He goes, why don't you open up the second show? That that fast. And this is a sold out improv. It's like four, it's like 400 people. And just for context, that is not done. You don't give a fan a guest spot right. on the show. So I and I say that because I want people to understand. I know that Mencia has his haters out there and and fine. Uh everyone is shades of gray, my friend. Everyone is yeah, I don't like that about you, but hey, this thing's pretty cool. Like, right. everyone is shades of gray. So he gave me this opportunity. I go up on stage. I did five minutes, three minutes, and then I get off stage, and literally right then and there he goes, he goes, hold on. And he, and he goes up on stage, and he asks the audience, he goes, hey, guys. Uh, by the way, he, he wasn't supposed to go on yet, but he just went up on stage and went, hey, guys, uh, how how'd you guys like Brad? And the whole audience, yeah. Then he goes, cool. You guys have just made a decision for me. Brad, you want to be my new opening act? Literally like that. That's fucking awesome. And I'm sitting there like, (laughs) yeah. I'm a junior at USC studying communications. Like, people don't know about Mencia now because he's not like... Yeah, he's not like a Rogan guy, right? You know, he's not. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, he's not, yeah, he's not. He's not like a comedy for store guy. Various or, reasons. Yes, uh, but yes, but yes, he, yes, yes. But so like people don't really know about him. Yeah, but he was a fucking at the time. Yeah, I mean that's like a giant. Yeah, and in, then uh, in, the, in the game. Yeah, and then literally the next week I was on the road. I was doing the Fox Theater in Bakersfield, which has thirteen hundred people, and that and that and that was sold out. That was the next week. And I was his opening act for four years, uh, and then uh, decided, you know, uh, college is over, time to go off on my own. And when he was just like, "Hey, go open for me," yeah. what the fuck did you do? Like, did you have something already yeah. like put together? I had my three minutes, five minutes that I had been doing at open mics for the past year and a half, and yeah, it's, and that was the first time I really had like a real audience because when you're an open mic comic, it's not an audience it's a couple people it's a couple people mostly the other open mic comedians so you can kind of gauge if something's halfway decent or not but you really don't know until you go up in front of an actual audience yeah and uh yeah when my when like i had i had real basic jokes but one of them i still tell every now and then on stage just because it's fun that like my first joke still gets a laugh it's like yeah i had something even back then uh, and it was a true story where um, I was at a hotel and a guy came out of an, out of an elevator, saw me. And uh, now I don't know this guy's ethnicity, but I do know the accent. So whatever, do whatever with it that you want, <laughs> Internet. But uh, <laughs> the guy sees me coming out of the elevator and just screams out. He goes, oh, my gosh, it's a demon. Get <laughs> away from me, you little demon. <laughs> and then he starts running. And I had a couple of friends with me that were like, oh, my God. And I just turned and ran after the guy going <laughs> like that and, like, chased him out of the hotel. And that was one of my first jokes because it was a true story. Um, and I remember that got laughs, and I was like, okay. So I did that joke that night, a couple others. And then, uh, yeah, it went well. It went good. Like, now I look back, and I probably would cringe, like, looking at – a bunch of the material, but it was like I had done plays and musicals and like improv comedy. So I'm, I've been on stage and honestly, when you look like me, you're used to people staring at you. (laughs) So it's like, it's not like, Oh my God, all these eyes, I don't know what to do with this. Like it's that that's all day. Every day. It's it's funny because we can relate there because I'm Mm. so, because of my size and being like having dreadlocks and tattoos and being (laughs) six foot six, like people stare at you Yep. and I'm just used to it. So it doesn't really bother me. That, so I, it's funny because we're like complete opposite yeah. sides of that spectrum, and so you I, get it, it is. It's like when you get on stage, yeah. As long it's as long as you like show confidence, yes. Like nobody is gonna question correct whether you fucked up or not. Yes, 